This is Bertha. She's a Panasonic Toughbook CF30 that my dad used to use when he worked for Wi-Fi. It originally came with Windows XP, but has since been upgraded to Windows 10. While this came with many benefits, it has bogged Bertha down a lot. She takes nearly 40 seconds just to wake up from sleep, and I can imagine the boot time is well over the minute mark. I feel bad for her. She is past her glowy days. And so, I just felt like I needed to help her. So that's what this video is all about. And there we go, she finally booted. My goal for this video is to get Bertha back into the glory days, so to speak. I just said that. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the exterior design of Bertha. She is tough. She is nearly indestructible. These are the back ports. You can see there's a VGA port, because 2003, and a serial port. There's her power plug, a single USB port, Underneath this panel, is a lot of I.O., including modem, ethernet, SD, and firewire ports. That is the hard drive, that can easily be removed. Underneath this panel on the left, you'll find the DVD drive, which is getting rarer and rarer these days. Right beside that is a removable battery, also getting rarer and rarer these days. Her stylus is located on either side of the handle. Bertha uses a resistive touchscreen, requiring the stylus or a fingernail. She runs Windows 10 as mentioned before, version 1607. Her display resolution is 1024 by 768. YouTube playback works great, especially in full screen mode, if only the Wi-Fi could cooperate. It's kinda weird watching 16x9 in a 4x3 panel. Speakers aren't perfect, but they aren't bad either. As mentioned before, she has a handle, which makes it very easy to carry both up. She's heavy too. With the introduction out of the way, I started by downloading an ISO image. I then decided to start by using good old Rufus and a USB drive. Copying the ISO files via Rufus to the USB it took an extremely long time, so that's why I used the time-lapse feature in KineMaster. Here you can see the USB light is going absolutely crazy. Eventually, format completed, and I was ready to start Plan A, using the USB to install Windows XP. Now, I want to take this moment to realize that things went wrong. XP Tablet Edition was not the original version meant for the Panasonic Toughbook CF30. So, while I'm going ahead and putting in the drivers that I will need, I'll take this moment to recognize my mistake and restart this whole process with Windows XP Professional with Service Pack 3. It's okay, I would rather use the touchscreen anyway. Here, this light is not as sporadic, it's a bit more consistent. Well, now copying is done, let's get to Bertha. Entering the BIOS is as easy as pressing Function 2. Here, I'll change the boot parameters to exclude the hard drive from the boot process, and prioritize USB booting. So, let's open up the USB side panel, and insert the first USB. And first and only, by the way. Black screen, we're still booting up. Panasonic post screen, I actually wanted to divert to the BIOS to make sure I save my settings. And I have not. I forgot to save, so, my fault. I'll go ahead and prioritize the Jeff last USB, and this time remember to save. There we go. Now, attempting to boot, uh, yeah. So after that didn't work, I decided to go the CD route. As you saw, I have multiple CDs. Some of them are blank. While well, some of them had installation files, I just wasn't sure which one. So, I decided to start prioritizing CD booting, and then opened up my collection of CDs, and then started going through them, one by one, to see if 
whatever one of them was the XP installation file. So I'll grab the top disk, put it into the drive, close the drive, and attempt it to boot. Well, while also saving the configuration in the BIOS. Zooming out so you can get a better look at it, the boot process began, or so I thought. This post screen is unlike anything I've ever seen before, but it quickly became obvious that this is not the bootable CD I was looking for, as we shall see right now. Media test failure, then operating system not found. So, that CD wasn't going to work. So, out with that CD, time for CD number two. You probably noticed the audio cutoff, but that's because I decided to trim a piece of my dialogue that I felt was not necessary. Well, CD number two. Yes, that's what I wanted. Press any key from boot to CD. Setup is checking the configuration files, and... Yes! Windows setup! This was a... Momentary victory, though. Aside from my phone freaking out as my parents work in the kitchen in the background with the focusing, my celebrations ended prematurely. Not by freeze, though. By an error code. That one. Oops. Doing another reboot while configuring some BIOS settings, and we'll try again. You can see the CD light going off, so there's definitely CD activity, but not anymore as the error displayed again. So that's two CDs down. So I thought about what I should do next. A plan C, if you will. Goodness, this tripod is very unstable. So I thought about disabling unnecessary components in the BIOS, so I went ahead and did just that. After I told it not to boot from CD. One we start later and we're in the BIOS. I told it to reset everything to its default values, which hopefully should work. The error message stated ACPI, and I read online that resetting the BIOS to its default values should help with that. Unfortunately. That also reset the boot manager. That's lovely. Time to go back to the BIOS and change the boot values again. Okay, finally, everything's how I want it for the moment. So, press any key to boot from CD. My goodness. That screen is both glossy and blurry. It almost looks like a fogged up mirror. But back on the topic at hand, that didn't work. So back to the BIOS I went, I thought that excluding the hard drive from the boot process was breaking compatibility. So I put it back in the boot list and it didn't work. Okay. Next, I started disabling everything unnecessary. For real this time, I started disabling everything except the USB ports. And that's about it. Wireless, gone. Bluetooth, gone. Parallel and serial ports, gone. VGA, gone. Everything, except keyboard, trackpad, display, and DVD drive and USB ports, were disabled. But that still didn't help. You can see me loading F6 to try and access that manual, install, SCSI, or RAID driver, or something like that menu. It didn't work. In fact, the computer started to beep at me, as you just heard. So that's almost as unfortunate as that process not working for me. Zooming the camera out, I decided to disable the hardware Wi-Fi switch to see if that was messing anything up. Well, one boot later, one press any key to boot from CD later... Nope! I had started to run out of ideas. Made sure the lights were off on the wireless switch. One last go. Booting from CD. 
wait a second. Okay, now we're booting to the CD like it should be. Unfortunately, it still didn't work. So, time to bust out the Dell Precision M6800. This is the replacement for Bertha. As you can see, it's a 17 inch monster running Windows 7 with a 64 bit operating system, a VGA port, and a DVD drive, which has one of my blank CDs on there. Inside the SD card reader is a blank SD. It's literally a Dell branded piece of plastic. So, well, that's pretty common practice. Same deal with the PCM CIA slot, Dell branded plastic. But that's not the topic of this video. There's the removable hard drive and the physical Wi Fi switch. So, off with Bertha, onto the precision. I started downloading the new version of XP Professional. And now, Suka95's Windows XP Startup Remix.
this is it. I have completed and restored Bertha to her original operating system. Her golden days have returned to her with Service Pack 3. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi card wouldn't cooperate, so I have a Netgear A6210, and this will be its only source of Wi-Fi for the time being. Connecting it up to our Wi-Fi network, done. Let's load Firefox 52.9.0 ESR. Now let's go into Google. I'll type in Windows XP for my test, and there we go. Loaded just fine. That interclick did not register for some reason. But anyways, moving on to YouTube. It took a little bit longer to load, but eventually it did load all the way. Now let's see how video looks on XP. I'm sorry for the lack of volume. It is louder in person. But as you can see, YouTube playback is still very much excellent on XP. Media Player 9 is awesome. It's probably my favorite version of Media Player because of the visual effects that it comes bundled with. No, I don't like Highway Blues. Unsurprisingly, 3D Pinball Space Cadet runs absolutely fine. I loved this game when I was a kid. I used to play it for hours on my mom's computer. In case you were wondering, it was a Compaq Presario S4000NX. It has since been given away. So it's unfortunate that a piece of my childhood is gone. But it will live on forever in this Toughbook CF30. Black hole. Overall, I am satisfied with how well this project has gone for Bertha. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in new videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.